So you are here, you're like, I need to use LinkedIn to do better with my career journey. And you wanna know the things to know about using LinkedIn to get your dream job. What are the do's and don'ts of actually using LinkedIn to get your dream job? And that is what we're gonna be having a conversation about today. Hello beautiful people, welcome to Janie Booz. It's your girl Janie and this is Janie of Canada where you get tips and resources on how to be a professional entrepreneur, student in Canada and many more. Today on this channel, I know I've gotten a lot of people say, hey, I'm trying to build my career, I'm a newcomer or I'm coming from my home country, I'm trying to figure out how to actually get a job. It's okay. I have been able to navigate my career, but I thought it's better to bring someone who does this for a living. So without further ado, I'd love to introduce my friend who is a recruiter and will help you navigate your way. Let me introduce Danny. Hi, Danny. Hi, hi, Janie. Hi, Janie's viewers. Uh, as Janie has said, my name is Dami. I worked previously as a recruiter here in Canada for a while. Um, I recently transitioned to be um, a pro skills facilitator. Uh, what that just essentially means is that I help people stand out in their career journey. So I help them know how to excel in, in the workplace. And so it's a job I really, um, really enjoy. And I'm glad to be here to help you guys as well today. So I did not mention this and I meant to, that we're going to start with the five things you should definitely not do when trying to network with recruiters and other professionals on LinkedIn. And if you wait to the end of this video, you're going to learn about how you should actually go about those things. So the ways to actually do things on LinkedIn to actually set yourself up right for career success. And at the end of the video, maybe I'll give you a sneak peek into what the next video about interviews will look like. It depends on if you stay to the end. That's how you find out. Take it away, Danny. <clears throat> So I'm going to be mentioning the, the five things you should do um, when you met, network with your recruiters on LinkedIn and five things you should definitely uh, not do when you're talking to recruiters if you want the maximum response from them. Okay. So the very first thing I'm going to be talking about is to say bad English on LinkedIn is a no-no. So do make sure that you don't have a message sent where you've not proofread whatever you're sending to the person. So explaining that in easier terms to understand, don't send the message with grammatical errors like this. I know, I know, I know what you mean, right? Some people might say, oh, because I'm obviously, but sometimes when we're in a haste, when we're sending messages to multiple people, we might slip up. And, exactly. but I also think if you slip up, it's okay, like sometimes life happens. I think you just need to follow up that message with the right or proper um, word that you were going to use anyway. Is that a fair, is that a fair disclaimer, um, Danny? Exactly, exactly. Thank you very much, Janie, for expatiating and explaining that properly. Um, so I'm gonna go to the next point. Um, don't be a time waster. I think this is probably the most touchy one for me. Don't waste people's time. People are very busy. That's why people are on LinkedIn, they are professionals, they have jobs they have other things that take away their time you don't want to be one of those people who would just come into someone's dms and then just say hi or um i want to find out xyz information that you can actually just find by yourself on their profile or on their uh it, by just doing a little bit of research so make sure that you're not there wasting people's times it's it's quite uh very annoying to have someone waste your time so make sure you're not that person nobody wants to be that person um, now I'm going to talk about something else. Um, make sure that you're not entitled. It's not okay. It's never okay to harass people. Don't be someone who is an entitled person. Um, like this person in the example here, nobody's really under any obligation to do anything for you. People should do things for you out of the kindness of their hearts, but you cannot harass people into helping you or doing things for you. So just make sure that you're not going on LinkedIn, harassing people uh, when you're supposed to be asking for their help. And I'll say to that, and it's okay for people to not respond to you as well. They don't owe you that time right so the fact that you asked nicely you checked or you did your research you were not entitled you proofread you are respectful 
doesn't mean that they have to respond to you okay so i guess that's the other that's something to buttress about that don't be entitled to someone else's time the fact they might not respond and it's okay um something else i'm gonna mention so i think we're down to number four so we're running through the list pretty quickly but i hope you're being able to get a few things from what we are talking about today because these points are very important and these are a few mistakes i found people make um so i'm going straight to number four do your own research don't ask people questions about things you can easily find on the internet or somewhere on their profile i have had someone ask me once uh what kind of industry i recruit for and if you check on my profile you can see that information on there so don't be that person who would just you know ask people questions that you can find for yourself exactly thank you so much Dami. and this is not even just on linkedin this applies generally in life or anywhere i have people who ask me oh jenny how did you get your express entry i have a full video up here you can search that on how i apply for my express entry how i filled my forms thank you very much jenny and i can imagine you having to go through this mm -hmm. so uh announce the final point on the don'ts this is the one that really ticks me don't make private messages in public mm. so What's i see a lot of people who okay. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna explain uh because this is one that i don't want anyone to misunderstand it because i see it a lot and i don't want people to keep making that mistake mm -hmm. so what i mean by don't make private messages in public if you need something from someone it's not okay to write in their comment sections i need a job mm. especially when you've not connected with them or you don't know who they are people do. or you're not even people in... do that oh my <laughs> God, that's actually true people do that that's yeah true. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you you make a post and then someone is like give me job <laughs> or just some other <laughs> some other kind of comment that's something you're supposed to send to them in a private that message true. that's something you're supposed to go to their personal message and say oh hello i see that you're a recruiter i'm quite interested in this role you made a post about i'm quite interested in this role you made a post about a couple of weeks ago or a couple of days ago would you mind taking out 10 to 15 minutes to, to give me some more information about the role i do think i'm gonna be a good fit um and i'll be more than happy to speak with you about how my skills and my experiences and my expertise aligns with this role as opposed to going where there are like 500 comments or 20 comments or even two comments and just saying give me a job I, that's so unprofessional I hear you. don't do that on because, LinkedIn. Okay, <laughs> don't be that yeah, person because honestly it doesn't make the person want to respond exactly. to you anymore it's like somebody who messaged me on instagram or maybe you dm'd me and say hey jenny i want to know how you got your first job in canada or something like that and i'm just like okay i'll get to you when or i'll make a video so that i don't have to repeat myself to hundreds of people but then you come on a different post that's public and like hey i dm'd you you haven't responded so you have to let people say things too, right? Because putting them in public doesn't make me want to respond to you any faster. It just means, okay, whenever I get to it, I get to it. I might not even get to it. So that's actually a very good point. Um, but then I think we're at the point where we maybe let's share with the people, since you've gotten to this point anyways, let's share with the people actual ways that things to do to actually build your career. Like This part I'm actually very excited about because I don't just like telling people, <laughs> don't do this, don't do that. Uh, because we have lots of people telling us what not to do anyway. So I'm yep. really excited about this part where we're able to tell you what to actually do. Uh -huh. So the very first thing I would say is to make sure you do your own research. Hallelujah. Now what does that look like? <laughs> what does that look like? Not everyone can help you on LinkedIn. Not everyone will help you. So for example, if someone is a third degree connection with you, so if you see third on LinkedIn in front of someone's name, that means that you don't even really know anyone who knows them directly. So most likely they're not going to answer you because they have no motivation to. If you see second, that means that you know someone that can actually introduce you to them, but maybe you don't know them personally. Gotcha. And then if you see first on linkedin that means that you're actually connected to them so you're a direct connection to them mm -hmm. you send them a, a linkedin connection request and they accepted you yep. when you're doing your research make sure that you identify people within your second or first networks who can actually provide the need that you have many people go after directors ceos and they get upset when those people don't answer them they will mm -hmm. not answer you they have one million people reaching out to them your best networks are your peers or people at least um, close enough to you um, in terms of network so do your research know who can actually help you and make sure that the people that have a much higher chance 
of responding to your messages than you know the people that you're trying to get the more popular yes. people who would most likely you know answer you and then you would have to harass yes. <laughs> on their comment section and say oh i sent you a DM and you didn't reply so that, make sure that you do your own research actually and that I, i'm taking two points from that so it's two it's two levels to it i think i'm hearing that the sweet spot on connections would be connections that are the first and second degree connections is that correct mm -hmm. like people you either already know and connected yeah. to and people who know someone you know, which is your secondary yeah. connections. I think sometimes we forget our first connections, honestly, when we're thinking about mm -hmm. our network. Because we're already connected to people, we don't even think to mind who we already know or who we're already Very connected true. to. Because sometimes we've gone to networking events, we've just done the LinkedIn um, nearby feature, we just added everybody. And then we don't even check, we don't even stop to say, who did I add from that thing? Like, who, what, can they help me? So I hear you on first and second degree connections, mining the network you already have. But I think another point you buttress that it's good to make um, to bring light to is the levels. So say you're looking for a job at, I'm just going to say TD Bank. Maybe it doesn't make sense to get the AVPs, VPs, SVPs as all the people you want to reach out to. You're saying it's also good to have a big mix of people at my level, peer, peer level, or someone who is a little higher so I can my chances of getting a response is higher. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jenny. The second thing I'm going to say is when you've done um, your research and you've done that sufficiently, uh, do make sure that when you're sending a message to the person, you have some context. This is key. Yeah. I have, you know, many people who reach out to me and I'm going to give you <laughs> one example as well. Um, of people who reach out to me with no context at all. Um, LinkedIn is not WhatsApp and it's not Instagram. So you cannot just go into someone's DM and say hi and expect uh, <laughs> a good response. I don't even think I respond to hi anywhere. Like, like no, hi, hi what? <laughs> this is a professional network. What do you want? Mm -hmm. Or you don't even want to go and say, oh, hi, I need a job. Can you help me? How can I help you? Do you need 15 minutes to chat with me? Do you need 10 minutes? Do you need me to give you specific information about certain kinds of jobs? What do you actually need? So make sure you always have context. That's a big do for LinkedIn. Recruiters are more likely to respond to people who have context in their messages as opposed to people who just say hi or hi, give me more information. So just make sure you do have that. And I, I, yeah, I hear you for sure. And I think I'll add to that to say, for me, context is based on like the research you've done. And the context is, I'm more like you've done research on the particular person you're reaching out to in the sense that I'm more likely to respond to someone who is like, hey, Jamie, I've been following you on this and I like your blog. Well, I see that you work at this company for this year's so i'm reaching out because like you're reaching out to me because of something very particular to me it's not mm -hmm. vague it's not high give me job so that context shows that you've done your research so it kind of buttresses on that first point say do your research about what you need from people who they are then i'll say follow them for a while if you haven't before because you don't want to just come out of the blue and be like help me you look like because of the title <laughs> exactly you have to be authentic in your messaging to say this is me, this is my personality. Introduce yourself like you would, like quick add a quick paragraph of your elevation elevator pitch, who you are, what skills you're you're interested in, and then talk about a similarity. And usually you will not know that similarity if you've not done your research and followed that person for a bit to understand them. It's just it is what it is. Thank you very much, Jenny. Once again, okay. you've helped me to expand on my point. This next point I'm not gonna talk about too long because it sort of feeds into the second point. You can it. <laughs> but just make yeah. sure you're specific so i've already touched on that a bit and i'll give you another example because examples are very important so you know exactly what we're talking about do you need 10 minutes do you need one hour of my time do you need me to tell you what certification you need to do or what you shouldn't do or how to break into the industry what exactly do you need from me because remember in one of the points we talked about in the don'ts don't be a time waster what exactly do you want? Give me specifics so that if I'm going to respond to yes. you, I can plan my day and my life around the response I have to give you. What's the next point? Um, the next point is for you to make sure you appreciate the process. I think Jenny talked about that uh, previously. Not everyone is going to respond to you and that's okay. It's not for you to say, when I blow, I will call for them and I will talk about how they didn't <laughs> respond to me. Not at all. There are lots of circumstances. Yes. People have they probably didn't even see your message or they thought they were going to respond and they forgot or they cannot help you or they don't want to help you and that's okay 
It's not it's everyone that is your helper okay. is everyone that can actually help you. So I think that's one thing you should know. Yes. Appreciate the process. One day will be passed. One day you would also be giving people advice. Uh, so when you're going through that, don't feel too bad. Do appreciate the process. Yeah. And I was just say to that, just expect that it's going to be a numbers game. Or like, me as I'm a sales professional, and I think that when I reach out to people, I expect that chances are you will reply to me. So when you reply to me, I'm like, what? You did? And I'm over the roof. As opposed to expecting stuff off of you, and then when it comes, I'm sad, right? So set yourself up for success in that way. And no matter no matter what people say to you, always be polite. I think that's just a free point yeah. I just wanted to toss in there because sometimes you might get a response and it's not what you want. I reached out to this really influential woman one time saying I wanted to pick her brain. And she said to me, she's like, I am way too above status for my brain to be picked. Newcomer, mm. I didn't know that some people might take that on an offense. Yeah. So I took that. I was like, you know what? I remember this feeling. I thought I'm going to make sure no one ever felt like that. And I still made my ask. She still said, no, it's okay. Right? It's okay. We bounce back. But I just remember to always be polite. Wow. Uh, but I'm very sorry you had to go through that journey. I just yeah. have to put that out there. Um, I know that we're talking about you enjoying the process, but sometimes it can be hard. And it's just, it's all learning. Uh, so the final point, I would say this is yeah. um, quite important. All of them have been important, but, but this is important because we hear people saying, oh, if you want to gain more visibility on LinkedIn, make sure you engage, make sure you like people's posts, make sure you post. All of this is good advice, but just make sure that you have quality over quantity because people say you should engage or you, or you should post. Don't just like things that are not related to your field. Build a brand image. When you're liking posts, make sure that you're liking posts that are relevant to you so that recruiters can see you. When you want to make a comment, don't just put a thumbs up um, or just a random comment. Make sure you think about a comment that can make you stand out. And if you're going to post anything at all on your page or share an article, make sure it's an article that is actually related to your career goal or something that is sensible. If it's, not, if it's not directly related, make sure that it's something that is quite sensible so your brand image is intact. And then so when people are searching for you, they can actually find you through the good content you engage in rather than just being random and all over the place and people not being able to place you. So quantity is not as important as quality on LinkedIn. If you post once in a while, but the things you post add value to your brand or your career search or your network, that's what you should go for. But don't just post 1 billion random things so that people are not going to notice you. It may just backfire. Okay, so perfect. So with that, I just want to say thank you so much, Dami, for sharing the point. I know it might sound like a hard process, but I honestly just say take it one day at a time. Don't beat yourself up about it. Be authentic. If you have an ask, make an ask. And if you think you're stepping on your foot, say, hey, like, I'm new to the industry. So, like, set your own seat if that makes you feel a little bit comfortable. comfortable. But just know that we're all human beings. We all have nerves. Switch your nerves to excitement and you can do it. You're well on your way to building that career of your dreams, to getting that first job, to being a, a LinkedIn superstar. So thank you so much, Dami, for coming on this channel. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, please leave it in the comment box. Um, I'm going, if you think this was helpful content and you're like, oh my Lord, I don't even have a LinkedIn um, a LinkedIn profile. I don't know where to start. Let me know because that's, a, that's content I'm very happy to make for you. Um, thank you so much for coming on the channel today. I hope you liked it. If you like it, like it. If you love, if you like it, subscribe. And I will see you on the next one. Thank you so much, Danny. Thank you so much, Jenny. Thank you so much, guys. Dude.